Welcome to this ACCA F1 paper do's and don'ts videos. So what are the key things that you must do in order to be successful? What are the key things you must not do in order to make sure you pass? So first of all, any of you that have watched the introduction video, the introduction to the paper will know that there are some scenario based questions. So they tell you some facts about an organisation. If they give you one of these questions, please make sure you are aware of the context of the scenario. Is it a big company or a small company, a big department or a small department? It might make a difference. What model are they expecting to use? If you don't know what model it is that you are using, then obviously you're going to struggle to apply it. So are they talking about Charles Handy's models of culture? Are they talking about White and Lewin's models of management? Are they talking about marketing? Are they talking about Honey and Mumford's learning styles? What exactly are they talking about? And secondly, what facts did they give you? They will need to give you enough information so that you can identify whether you are using a power, a person, a task or a role culture if the question is about Charles Handy. They will need to give you enough information so that you can work out what kind of learning style, according to Honey Mumford, a, a person is using. Secondly, do practice lots of questions in advance. The temptation, if you are studying other papers, particularly if you are studying F2 and F3, will be to practice F2 and F3 because they have numbers in. So we like doing numbers questions because then we know we've got the right answer. But F1, there is just so much material. It is a massive syllabus. It's absolutely enormous. You need to do as many practice questions as you possibly can because you'll see certain things coming up repeatedly. Do read as much business English as you can. Now, one of the problems that students find with F1 is that the language that is used is not always particularly clear. They can use some quite long and detailed words. When I've been teaching F1, particularly with overseas students for whom English is not their first language, often they are absolutely fine with the theory if only they understood what the question was asking them. So if I say, if I take the question and say, this is what it actually means, then the students know exactly what we're doing. But it's because the ACCA often use difficult words, it's not always very clear what's going on. So the more you can read, the better. Read textbooks, read revision kits, read course notes, read the daily papers, read a paper, a newspaper written in English, because that's the best way to improve your business English. There are plenty of English language business papers on the internet. You might find it best to look at one of those. Please do think about why certain areas are in the syllabus. In the syllabus, you are asked to look at fraud. You are asked to look at internal controls. You are asked to look at the differences between external and internal audit. All of these are going to come back again at later papers. So you need to understand them at F1, which means you need to think about why they are in the syllabus. Why are you studying them at all? If you do think about that, it will make it easier to understand the material. There is some quite technical material in F1 and a lot of students don't understand it because they don't really know why it's in the syllabus. They don't know what they're supposed to do with it. So make sure that you do know what you're supposed to do with it. Don't try and question spot. As I've said, it's an enormous syllabus and the examination will cover most of it. If you are doing a paper based exam, the examiner will make sure that the questions cover the entire syllabus. If you're doing a computer based exam, the computer program that chooses your questions so they are all random. If you were to do the exam twice, you wouldn't get the same questions each time. The computer program is designed to make sure they are testing lots of little bits of the syllabus. They don't do everything in one area. So don't try and question spot. And also, you can see a lot of the theories are actually examined in a lot of detail. 
So a lot of the theories are examined in a lot of detail. This means you can't afford to know a lot of area, a lot of things on one area, and nothing about anything else. You've got to know a little bit about everything. And finally, don't give up. There will be times when you get a bit frustrated with F1 because it is quite technical and there's a lot of learning. On the other hand, it is a paper that is not that bad to pass. It does have a relatively high pass rate. So keep practicing, keep learning the theories, keep practicing the questions, and you should have success in your exams.